I was watching my buddy John's latest video this morning about the progress he's making on a header-only gaming framework that he's developing called Gunslinger when I got a comment on one of my dev videos from back when I was working on a game called Draw asking me how to set up Raylib. This is a question that I get asked frequently and it comes up a lot in the Raylib Discord. So today I thought I'd make you a video showing how to compile Raylib on Windows and get a development environment up and running so you can use it in your projects. Raylib is defined by the author as a simple and easy to use library to enjoy video games programming. And if you've read any of my blog posts or watch any of my videos, you'll know I think it's just that. It's an excellent game engine with more bindings to other programming languages than I've ever seen. And the creator of the library, Ramon, couldn't be a nicer guy. He's always hanging around his Discord and helping people out and answering questions. Raylib gives you the framework to build something from scratch while taking all the annoying parts out of the development process. So when you're looking to get started, this is the main site, raylib.com. And if you go over here to the wiki, the first section of the table of contents is more developer focused, talking about the architecture and certain things. But down here on the development platforms, we're gonna look at the first one working on Windows. So it gives you some other options. Uh, there's actually an installer for Raylib, a Notepad++ script, and some other things. Um, but not only is it better to learn how to compile things yourself, but by doing it this way, you're going to be IDE and uh, I guess editor independent in that you'll be able to use your editor of choice and you'll understand exactly how the library was built and compiled and you'll be able to use it whichever way you want. So the first thing that you want to do is find out if you have MinGW, otherwise known as the GCC compiler ported to Windows uh, in your path on your computer. So you can go ahead and pull up Command or PowerShell I prefer PowerShell, but if you use the PowerShell version, you need to make sure you add .exe to where, because where is a reserved keyword in PowerShell. So it won't come up unless you include the .exe. So where.exe gcc. And you can see that it's not in my path because it doesn't return anything. So the first thing that we need to do is head over and get a copy of MinGW. You can just Google MinGW. It's very important that you get the 64-bit version as the 32-bit version won't work and uh, throws a bunch of errors with Raylib. Um, I don't recommend this WinBuilds installer thing. Um, I recommend just getting this uh, straight download installer thing. So when you go to install it, it's gonna give you this little screen. You can just go with some of the default options here. Just make sure that you're building for Win32 and not a uh, POS-IX system. Once we click Next, go ahead and define an install location. Uh, I just choose C MinGW, and it'll put another MinGW in fold folder inside of that, but that's okay. So it's gonna take its time and do its thing. And when that's all done, you can see that it did not automatically get put in my path, so we need to add it. So to do that, you can just search in the Windows search box down there um, type in path, P-A-T-H, and open up that screen. And then there's a little button there to look at your system's environment variables. So go ahead and click that. Go down to where it says path under the user variables. Uh, you can see I already had MinGW in there in a different location. Um, don't want to use that, so I deleted it. And then I go and search for the new MinGW we just installed. So you can see it says MinGW, another folder, and then a folder called bin, that stands for binary. Um, I just go and double check. You can see that gcc.exe is in there. So we know that that's the right one. So go ahead and click OK, OK again. Uh, you probably need to reload your terminal program so that it shows up. And you can see if I type where.exe gcc, it shows me the path that we just defined. So now we know that gcc is in our path. OK, MinGW 64-bit is configured. So now we're gonna head back to GitHub where the Raylib source code lives. Um, you can see here on the source page that there are commits as recent as a few hours ago. Um, and in general, while builds are stable, uh, if you're planning on shipping something or you don't want something to break unexpectedly, uh, you should always download a release. So uh, there's a stable release. The current version is 3.5 here on the right. Um, you can see here on the installer page, there are zip files, there are um, different targets. You can see Linux, Mac OS, Win64, etc. 
Um, we want the source code because we're going to compile it ourselves. So just download source code zip file. Uh, drag that into a directory of your choice. I just put it in C. Then once it's extracted, I go back into my terminal program. Uh, I change directories to the Raylib directory and then the source directory. And now following the wiki, we are going to run the min gw32 make command uh, for platform desktop, just like it says. Once you run that, you can see there are some warnings. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of output. We're not really concerned with all that. They're just standard compiler warnings. Um, the main thing that we need to be concerned with is anything that says error uh, or the intended result, which is that the static library was generated. So that's what we're looking for. Uh, that means it compiled successfully. You have now compiled Raylib. Congratulations. Um, so now all you need to do is go navigate back into the source directory where, you, where you're going to see that the library lib.a file, dot .a meaning it's a static library file, um, was output. And essentially at this point you're done. Now all you need to do in any game or project that you put together using Raylib is include the Raylib header file and that static compiled library, library lib.a. So I'll show you a quick example. So for example, if we create a new folder, and we call it Raylib test, okay, and uh, we're going to go ahead for this project and just put in the basic uh, window example from the Raylib source. So if we go here to examples, uh, core, we're just looking for the core basic window.c. Um, go ahead and pull the raw here, copy, new file, this is nothing fancy, we'll just call this main.c. Uh, put that in there. Um, so it's looking for the include, so that's the first thing that we'll bring over. So we just create a new folder, and again, you can do this for any project. It isn't limited to this one that I'm showing you right now, and you can reproduce this as many times as you want. You've compiled Raylib, um, so you can keep doing it. So this is going to be the include directory. It's starting to look like a regular project structure. So if we go back into where I compiled Raylib, uh, the Raylib dir that I, de that I unzipped, and into the source. We're going to find the first file that we need, which is raylib.h. Where are you at? Ray, raylib.h. That's the header file that must be included. So we can go back to our directory right quick. Where are you at? Uh, development raylib test. Put that in the include file. And then go back to the, oops, to the raylibdir once again, source, to that library lib.a um, static compiled file that we just made. Go ahead and copy that, uh, control C, or you can right click and copy, doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> and then back to the directory that we're working on. Uh, Raylib test, where are you at? And I'll just make another folder and call this lib and paste that bad boy right in there. Where are you at? Boom. So, all we have is a main.c, which is this core basic window example. Um, the a live directory containing the static compiled li library, and then this include directory containing um, the single header file. And that's all we need. Any Raylib project that we're going to make moving forward, um, that's all you have to do. So, I mean, you can repeat this a million times. If I create a new project on my desktop and I call it next, next Raylib game, um, you do the same thing. You bring over the, the include file, the single header file, the library file, and then your source code and build it from there. And that also makes it, um, the, the nice thing about doing it this way is it makes it portable. You know, So you're not depending on um, some sort of static path where like if I go and I move this into a completely different hard drive, so I'm in my G drive, but if I move this into my C drive on my desktop, um, it doesn't matter because there are no references back to the C drive or, or G drive where I compiled Raylib. It's right there locally. And I'm going to show you how this works. So we have the, uh, the basic core window right here, main.c. Um, you can see it's throwing an error because it doesn't see it. So we can just go ahead and add include on that. And that error will go away uh, because it expects it to be here. Um, and now we're ready to compile. I mean, that's it. We're ready to compile our first project and uh, build off it from this point. 
And uh, all we have to do is go back, you can either go back to the terminal and open a path here, or VS Code comes with a nice built-in terminal that'll take you to the current working directory. So here we are. Um, actually, it's in the wrong directory because I just moved it to my desktop, but we'll go ahead and reopen it in the C drive because it doesn't matter. So reopen it, pull up a new terminal. You can see we're in the correct directory now. And this is the most important part. So um, you can build a make file or a batch script um, of your choosing to do this for you every time. But I'm going to write it out here and explain uh, what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger so folks can see it. And uh, we're going to call our compiler. Um, remember, if you remember, we not only installed uh, MGW, but we MinGW, but we downloaded the Raylib source uh, and compiled it. Uh, with MinGW as well, the uh, the make file. So we have to use MinGW here. Um, if you're going to use uh, MSVC or a different C compiler, then the instructions are going to be a little bit different. But this is with the GNU, GNU GCC um, port to Windows MinGW. So GCC that invokes the compiler. Uh, Main.c that is the source file. Uh, and then we're going to say the output file is going to be, you can name it whatever you want. So I guess game.exe. Um, and then these, the next thing that comes are some compiler flags. This is an optimization flag. Um, I, I totally forget. I, I think with all is, is all warnings. Um, this is the C standard. So we're using C99. Um, with no missing braces, that is a uh, compiler error that has been around forever when it, it, there's actually not missing braces there, so you add it as a flag. Um, now, this is the most important part. After the compiler flags, um, we need to tell it which header files to include um, because these, again, these files don't live in the MinGW compiler itself. Um, there's other ways to do that, but we want to include it in our actual project file. That way it's portable and uh, it's a relative dir, so we don't have to point to an absolute uh, path that changes. So we just include it in the current directory. So we just say include because it's right there. We're in the current directory and we want to include this folder over here to make sure we get that header. And then the next part is just as important. We need to point to our com uh, compiled static library, library lib.a. So here I say lib. Lastly, after including the library, so now it knows where to find the library, we can add what are called library flags. Um, so we just need a few, um, l ra, ra lib. Um, this dash l actually expands to uh, lib, lib. So it actually is expanding to lib ra lib, which is what we're pointing to here. Um, and then a few other flags that come with your compiler uh, on Windows. So uh, l open gl, gl32, um, l gdi32, and l win and mm. And that's it. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Because I moved the source file um, across drives without saving it, it's uh, not there. Let me paste that bad boy back in and make sure I save it. Uh, that would have been bad, would not have compiled. So it's in there, it's saved, got the include relib.h. Um, again, this is just the core basic window to build off of. So uh, one last time, we have the source file, or we call the compiler, then we have the source file, the output file, main.exe. Is what we're naming. Oh, we can call it game, I guess. I don't know why we call it name. It's called game. It's going to be a game. Game.exe. Um, the compiler flags. Uh, dash i for include. Include the single header file. Dash l. Include the library. And then the library flags. So if we hit enter, uh, we have a new file. It compiled our first game. If we go into the directory, into Raylib test, you can see we have game.exe just sitting there. And it's successful. We've compiled our first Raylib program, the core basic window. And we can repeat this any number of times uh, and it'll do the same thing. Uh, even if we create a new file, we never have to compile Raylib again until, unless we want, if there's a new version or update or something like that. Um, so you probably don't want to write this every time. Uh, a lot of people choose to put it in a make file or a batch script of some sort. On uh, Windows, you can just create a like run.ps1 file. I think PS1 is the extension for PowerShell. I think you can just paste that on in there, copy paste that, <clears throat> right? And then save that. And then I think if you just type 
So like let's say we clear our, our game file and we want to run it again. So now like let's say we make some changes to the source code. We come down here and we say like new basic window. Okay, save that. And I think we can just call run.ps1 from here. And bam, we have our game again. So if we go and open that, uh, game.exe, we have new basic window, which I changed the title of the window. And that's it. Uh, I hope you found that useful. Um, if there's anything I missed or you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to answer. Uh, you can also reach out to me in the Raylib Discord. I'm happy to help. Just ping me. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you next time.